All right, today we're going to look at torque and specifically how are we going to use torque in a static equilibrium problem. So just a refresher on torque, torque is equal to the force perpendicular times the lever arm where the lever arm is a straight line from the axis of rotation to where the force is being applied. And so this R is that distance and we need to find a force that's para perpendicular to it. We're going to use counterclockwise as the positive direction, clockwise as the negative direction. So the first step when we solve a static equilibrium problem is identifying that yes, this object is not accelerating linearly or rotationally. So we're in static equilibrium. So we need to draw a free body diagram for our bar here that is supporting a 300 newton mass. It has a 200 newton weight itself and the cable is angled at 30 degrees. And we want to figure out what is the tension in that cable. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a free body diagram. So I have my 300 newtons acting down here. I have my tension acting up here. And because this chapter with force times the lever arm, we are very careful about where we locate these forces. So this 200 newtons is located at the center of mass. So I draw the mg of an object at its center. In this case, it's 200 newtons for its weight. Now there are a couple more forces here. The wall, it's hinged at my wall. So the wall is holding it up with some force Fy and holding it out with some force Fx. Now, because it's not rotating, I can choose any point as the axis of rotation because if it's not rotating, I get that choice. So I'm going to choose it down here at the end because what this does for me is it eliminates these two forces from my torque equation. Force Fx is eliminated just because it's not perpendicular. Fy is eliminated because it doesn't have an R value. It's at the axis of rotation, so it's R value zero. So neither of these is producing any torque. The 200 newtons is producing torque. The 300 newtons is producing torque. Tension is also, but I have to be careful because I want to find the perpendicular component of that tension. The other thing we need to include in our free body diagram is not only do I need force, I also need distance. So I'm going to need to include the distance from the axis of rotation to each of my forces. So if I call the length of the rod L, this is going to be L over 2. And this side over here is L over 2. I tend to write in each little component so that they all add up to the total length. All right. The next step is I'm going to generate my equation. So the sum of the torques equals 0. So I have to add up each torque. Well, torques have direction counterclockwise and clockwise. So I will need a positive or a negative sign on them as well. So my tension, I need to find that perpendicular component. So I have T sine of 30. And I need to decide what is their directions. And a good pet tool here is to go ahead and figure out what those directions are before you write your equation. So hold your pencil, or in my case, I'm going to hold a ruler. The 200 newtons, apply a force like you that 200 newtons and see how it rotates around that point. So these, this 200 newtons causes it to rotate clockwise, the 300 newtons clockwise as well. However, the tension, that 30, T sine 30, is going to be counterclockwise. So I have a negative torque, a negative torque, and a positive torque. So we start to write these out. So the Tension is going to be T sine 30, it's positive, times how far it is from my axis of rotation. So it's located the whole length of the rod. So L minus, because it's a negative torque, my 200 newtons times its distance away, which is L over 2. Minus, again because it's causing a clockwise torque, my 300 newtons times its distance away, which is L. all adds up to zero. Now the nice thing here is as long as I go with that L value, all of the L's cancel. So I really just need the proportional locations. I don't need their actual locations. Okay. With that said, I can now go ahead and solve for T. So I'm going to move these two over to the other side. So I have two T sine 30 equals 200 divided by 2 is 100. So I have 100, move the 300 over, plus 300. So I have 400 divided by the sine of 30. Sine of 30 is a half, so I get 800 newtons will be the tension in my cable. 